As the first official royal mistress of France from 1444 to 1450, Agnes Sorel commanded power and influence in the court of King Charles VII. Charles first met Agnes when she was working as basically an assistant for Isabel of Lorraine. Agnes later started working for Queen Marie d'Anjou, Charles' wife, and this is when he absolutely fell in love with her. It's said that just being around her brought him out of a deep depression. Unfortunately, Charles abandoned Marie, who was pregnant with their 12th child, for Agnes. And when I say he abandoned her, I don't really mean that he like threw her out and said good luck, but it more so shifted the primary attention to Agnes, and publicly he said that he was with her. But Charles was doing a lot. Like, he was being the boyfriend that every girl wanted. He was spoiling her and showing her off to the public, and she was technically his mistress, so people were pretty much gossiping behind their backs at this point. Their public affair scandalized the French court and earned Agnes a lot of enemies. But Agnes didn't care. She was like, oh, you want to talk? I'll give you something to talk about. And boy, did she, because we're talking about her over 500 years later. Agnes's fashion choices were as bold and daring as the public canoodling that she was doing with King Charles. Because she wore her dresses basically so that the bodice was unlaced and therefore people were able to see her exposed breasts. Agnes's breasts were never fully exposed, like some people try to say. But there's no primary evidence to support that Agnes was walking around with basically one breast fully exposed all the time. She just wore the bodice that was unlaced, like I said, so you could kind of glimpse her chest every once in a while, but that's all I can really gather from my research. If I'm wrong, please let me know. Anyway, this kind of became Agnes's brand. Many French women started emulating the fashion trend of unlacing their bodices. In addition to her breasts kind of being out, she also was known for wearing a lot of diamonds. Now, let me take you on a walk throughout French history because this next part may be lesser known to a lot of people. Two centuries prior to Agnes entering the royal court, King Louis IX banned anyone besides the king from wearing diamonds. So naturally, everyone's like, Why say what a magnificent pair of bananas. Oh, great heavens! When Agnes strolled in with jewels and diamonds dripping off her neck and wrists. Charles gifted Agnes so much stuff, like land, a private residence, and, like I said, mountains of jewels, including what might have been the first ever cut diamond. She didn't seek royal favors only for herself, however. Agnes used her position to advance the fortunes of her family as well by securing them positions in court. Unfortunately, her life was relatively brief because she passed away at the age of 28 in 1450, when she was pregnant with her fourth child. Some people even suspect foul play was involved with her death, because her initial cause of death was false. So back in 1450, when she died, she was on her way to see King Charles when she apparently got dysentery. King Charles got suspicious because he was like, well, she was fine the last time I saw her. His advisors felt his suspicions and started kind of panicking, and they blamed this guy named Jacques Coeur and falsely threw him in prison. Jacques was a wealthy businessman and merchant who was able to lend the king money for the reconquest of Normandy in 1450. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was the advisor's way of getting some of the target off of their backs and getting rid of someone who had a lot of influence too. However, this was probably all for nothing because Agnes's body was exhumed in 2005 and high levels of mercury were found in her system. And it's true that mercury was found in women's makeup during this time, but the quantity of mercury in her system was highly indicative of poisoning. So there's another theory behind her death, and I don't know if it actually happened, but the theory is that King Charles' son had her poisoned. Yeah, this little shitbag of a son figured Charles' mistress might have quite a bit of power over him, and didn't like that at all. He also hated Agnes personally, which makes sense because, you know, his mom was the one who got pushed aside for this other woman. And he had gotten into a falling out with his father years prior, which led to him being banished from the kingdom. So he kind of blamed Agnes for this falling out. And this leads me to think that he totally had a motive for having her poisoned. 
but we'll probably never know the whole story for certain. What is certain is that Agnes was a fashion icon. She pushed boundaries when people really didn't care to. While the French weren't totally scandalized by seeing her breasts as modern day society would have been, she shocked the public by wearing flashy jewelry and reveling in luxurious dresses and furs that the king bought for her. While this might paint a picture of someone who's snotty and rich, she was actually really kind to those around her. Monstrelet the Chronicler. Side note, I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that. But anyway, he wrote of her, quote, So this Agnes was of a very charitable way of life and liberal almsgiving, and of her possessions distributed widely to the poor, to the churches, and to beggars, end quote. A true fashionista with a heart of gold. And that was the story of Agnes Sorel, the first official mistress and her untimely end. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!